Okay, so I'm going to call this video a couple of scriptures. A couple of scriptures. Once again, it's another video coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahshai, Baal Shem Rakaakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in, which is indeed a blessing that we know this truth. All right, so what inspired me to do this video was a couple of comments left on this video here that I did. Uh, this is a comment from Word of Truth with J.D. Niger. And I've seen this name before. Every now and then this individual leaves comments on my, uh, on my videos. And the topic has to do with uh, Joseph being the natural father, the natural biological father of Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh Shai had a natural biological father. Let me uh, turn this thing off so I don't get disturbed. All right. Okay, so... The first comment says, as you see here on the screen, how long will ye, how long will you, not ye, how long will you be blind? Then the second one, you're not thinking straight. Joseph is not the natural father of Yahweh Shai. Kook. <laughs> you're not thinking straight. Joseph is not the natural father of Yahweh Shai. Kook. Okay, well, by the end of the video, we'll see who's the kook. Anyway, that inspired me to do this video and to prove with a couple of scriptures, and there's many more, believe, believe you me, to prove with a couple of scriptures that indeed Joseph was the biological father, was the biological father of Yahweh Shai when Yahweh Shai came on the scene. All right. Now the first one is the book of Luke, the second chapter, and um, I'll start at the 40th verse. It says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of the Heavenly Father was upon him. Now his parents, wait a minute, his parents? His, his parents which means he <laughs> that's two peoples, <laughs> right? Parents means what? Two people. Usually what? <laughs> All right, usually a father and a mother. All right, to say no, Becky has two daddies or Johnny has two mommies. All right, a father and a mother. That's what it means by parents. Parents denotes two. Now his parents, which would be who? Joseph and Mary. Okay? Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And that's according to the law. Okay, when you go in the law, uh, Deuteronomy the 16th chapter goes into that. Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. As a matter of fact, let's get that. And once again, it shows you the, the New Testament is based upon the Old Testament because you got these New Testament these New Testament uh, individuals they don't believe in the Old Testament they only believe in the New Testament well what, what does that mean according to the law where do you find out the uh, uh, account of what law they're talking about in that New Testament scripture I just read you'd have to go back to the Old Testament in particular for that for that uh, for that account, you'd have to go back to Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. And by the way, Deuteronomy means second book of the law. Hold up, let's read that again. Right? Uh, Luke 2 and 42, and when he was... I'm sorry, Luke 2 and 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover... And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. 
All right, so why did they go to Jerusalem? Right, why did they go to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover? Let's find out why. Bear with me for a minute. We go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, the 16th verse. This is why. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy power in the place which he shall choose, which happens to be the, the mother city, if you will, Jerusalem. And the reason why I say the mother city, because when you go in Galatians, it speaks about uh, Jerusalem being the mother, the mother of us all. That's, uh, I think that's somewhere in Galatians, the fourth chapter. So Jerusalem is the mother city, the met metropolis, if you will, which metropolis means mother city. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy, thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is also known as the Passover, the, 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 the reason being is the, uh, the, uh, the first night of the Passover, uh, according to the Passover, Unleavened Bread is eaten on that night, okay? So it's, it's also known, the Passover is also known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Because during the Passover, what is eaten? Unleavened bread. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's three, time, three times a year. Shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. So now you know why they went to Jerusalem. Okay? And in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Because remember, Joseph and Mary lived in another city in the land of Israel. So they had to go to Jerusalem. So now, uh, Luke 2 and 41 again. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast according to the law, which I just read, Deuteronomy 16, right? And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahweh tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. And I believe they were heading back to Nazareth. Okay? So let's read the 43rd verse again. And when they had fulfilled it, the days... As they return, notice the they. So that's two people, right? Meaning his parents and the company that might have been with them. But we're focusing on the parents of Yahweh Shai, the father and the mother. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahweh Shai tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph, who's this Joseph here? This was the biological father of Yahweh Shai, the biological father of Yahweh Shai. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. So Joseph and Mary. Let's keep reading. But they supposing him to be, but they supposing him to have been in the company, right? Went a day's journey and they sought him. And they sought him among their kinfolk, kinsfolk and acquaintance. So, you know, they noticed that he, he wasn't, uh, he didn't leave with them from Jerusalem. He stayed back in Jerusalem. And there was a reason for that. He, the, the key is, the scriptures tell us he turned 12 years old. Now, when a, when a boy turns 12 years old, back then he became a man. All right, he became a man. So as Yahweh Shai became a man, at 12 years old, he started doing what he was called to do. He started doing what he was put on the earth to do, as he's going to tell his father and his mother after they found him. I believe it was three days later that they found him. Okay? He was making a, a declaration, Yahweh Shai was making a declaration of manhood. 
That's what he was making. That's what he was doing. All right. Uh, let's read 43rd verse again. And when they had when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahushai tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to be to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. So they were really looking for Yahushai. Of course, they you know, his 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 parents, they were not probably, they were terrified. They said they they didn't know what happened to their son. For all they knew, their son could have been dead or killed. You know? Anyway, reading on, it says, And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. So you can only imagine how frustrated the father and the mother was. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And th you know, this was Yahushai, right? At the age of 12, right? And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Because he, un he, un he understood and answered according to the Holy Spirit. You know, we always talk about the Holy Spirit, Rakak Kodash. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother, listen good, listen good. This is the, f the first scripture that proves that Yahushai had a biological father. A biological father, and of all people that knew it, Mary knew it. Okay, Be based upon what Mary says to her son, after looking for him and after finding him three days, which she was not probably, she was out of her mind. I mean, you know how the emotional these women can get. She was out of her mind looking for her son. You can only imagine the frustration, the anger, the fear. She was a bottle of emotions, especially the mother, okay? I know the father was too, but especially the mother. So let's, let's get some insight into what Mary said after finding her son, what Mary said to her son, right? And remember, he's 12 years old, right? And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, listen good, here it comes. Behold, thy father and I have, have sought thee sorrowing. So, for those of you that believe that um, Yahushua's father was a spirit or God was his father, <laughs> you mean to tell me? <laughs> Let's, let's get the energy of what's said here. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. So let's say the uh, spirit, the, you know, they teach the, uh, the one they call Jesus Christ, which is Yahweh Shai, that his father was a spirit or an angel or some entity, or he just had no father. So you mean to tell me Mary would say, your father and I have sought thee sorrowing? Why would Mary even mention about your father? Who's Mary alluding to? She's alluding to Joseph. And she said it correctly. She put him first before herself. Because it's, as it is written in the law, honor thy father and thy mother. So Mary, which show, shows you right there, Mary was a dutiful woman. Dutiful to her husband. Joseph, the father of Yahushai. And by the way, Yahushai was the first child between the union of uh, Joseph and Mary because there were children more to come. Yahushai had biological brothers and sisters. This is more proof that uh, Joseph was Yahushai's father. The fact that he had biological brothers and sisters and the scriptures tell us this. They even name his biological brothers. All right? And I believe that's the next scripture, the next scripture to prove that um, Joseph is Yahushua's biological father. So those of you naysayers, explain this to me. Explain how Mary, maybe Mary was delusional. After all, she was scared out of her wits, right? Looking for her son. <laughs> so maybe she was delusional, right? Saying your father and I, right? This is what Mary said. 
Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Because, behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. So maybe Mary was delusional. Huh? Thy father and I. Who, she, who is Mary alluding to? Joseph. And if you believe that, some of you believe that an angel was uh, the father of our Lord, then why would they have to, uh, why would it take them so long to find, uh, uh, find Yahweh Shai? Why would it take them so long? I mean, after all, his father's an angel. He would, they, the angel would inst instinctively know or knew where Yahweh Shai was. He's an angel, right? Doesn't make sense, man. The only thing that makes sense to this verse is that Yahweh Shai, just like everybody else, had a biological father and a biological mother. And both of them were scared out of their wits looking for their son. They had no idea where he was. Okay, let me read that again. Son, why has thou thus, why has thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sovereign. See, so he had a father, biological father. That was Joseph. And he said unto them, how is it? This is the re response Yahweh I gave unto them. Again, like I said, Declaring his manhood and, and, and as being a man, what was he put on the earth to do? To teach the gospel of the father, Yahweh. And then ultimately become a sacrifice or a sacrificial lamb for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. Those were his duties as being a man. Okay? And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? <laughs> Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And you know it's heavy, um, what, uh, shall we say 12 years before? Uh, remember the meeting that uh, the old man had, Simeon, had with his parents, Joseph and Mary. And you remember the, the, the things that Simeon, the old man, said about Yahweh Shai, okay? So basically, Yahweh was telling his mother, you should have known why, you know, in the spirit, why I did what I did. You know, I have a heavy calling from my father. And when he said my father, meaning his, his spiritual father, which is Yahweh. Yahweh is the spiritual father of all of us. One of the titles of the heavenly father is the father of spirits. But we, just like all of us, we, he, you know, we have a biological father. And it was no exception with Yahweh Shai. And those that say any different, they, they just don't understand the scriptures. They're the ones that, that are kooks. They're the ones that's blind. Okay? And he said unto them, Have ye, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? There you go. And they, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. The they, again, who's the they? His two parents, Joseph and Mary. Now, if you can't see that, then you are blind, right? And you have no understanding. And like I said, yeah, they did. They came from Nazareth and they were going back to Nazareth. Because the next verse, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them and was subject unto them. Who's the them? Again, his parents. This is where you bring in the scripture, honor thy father and thy mother. Right? So he was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. There you go. Because he, he, he kind of you know, told off his mother. All right, so that was the first example. Let's get the next one. John, the sixth chapter, showing you that the, that the townspeople knew that Yahweh Shai had a biological father. They, back then, they didn't believe in that nonsense that he, he didn't have a father, that Mary was asexual, that all kind of nonsense is out there uh, of people believing that our Lord didn't have a biological father. I mean, it's just incredibly stupid. All right, John, the sixth chapter. And again, that nonsense, that madness goes back to... Um, uh, what was it, the, the Nicene Council? 
I think it was. If I'm not mistaken. It's, you know, Mary, so-called Mary being divine. So she couldn't have had a husband. Joseph was not a husband. Or, or uh, rather that uh, Mary brought forth the child by herself. Because they don't understand uh, the scripture in the book of Luke. When the angel came to Mary. They don't understand that account. So they made up this this fable. This cunningly devised fable. That's, that's why the Bible speaks about. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me see if I can find this. Cunningly. Yeah, this is it. Because that's what that is. You know, uh, Mary being divine. So pretty much, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and Mary got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. People actually believe that nonsense. And they don't understand that. The Holy Spirit means that the child that was in Mary's womb, which was of the seed of David. How is it possible for our Lord to be of the seed of David, right? If Mary was not impregnated by a man that came out the lineage of David, which, which happened to be Joseph. How could that be fulfilled? But people, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, the people that believe in this, uh, you know, like this guy, J.D. Nigel, whatever the hell his name is. He's one of them. He doesn't understand that. He doesn't understand that the, the fact that our Lord came out the lineage of David. Because Joseph came out the lineage of David. It was David's uh, sperm that was pumping through Joseph. That entered into Mary. All right. That entered into Mary and brought forth the, the, the first child, which was Yahweh. And then there were more children to come. Anyway, 2 Peter 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So that's us. We have not followed cunningly devised fable. That's what that is. That that uh, Mary being divine and the Nician council and uh, Mary's divinity, you know, that's that's a cunningly devised fable. There's no scripture in the Bible where where it tells us to honor Mary and worship Mary. Like that stupid prayer. The, our, the um, uh, prayer that they have, not the Our Father prayer, the prayer that these, uh, uh, you know, the, the Catholic Church has, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Where is that in the scriptures? Holy Mary, Mother of God. Where is that in the scriptures? Where in the scriptures are we supposed to pray to Mary? Now, it's true that Mary was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. And, and, and the product of that was, you know, what was her son because he had he had the Holy Spirit. He had the he had the truth. That's what that means. Doesn't mean that he didn't have a biological father. OK. Anyway, let's get back to. Uh, the, uh, the the point, the second one. So John six. And. Uh, John six. Let me see where I'll start here. John 6, and uh, I'll start 38. Now, this is Yahweh is speaking to his, his uh, townspeople. All right. It says this, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And, and that was demonstrated in the first scripture. That's why Yahweh Shai gave such a response to his mother. He said, look, I was put on here to do the will of my father, which is what? To teach this gospel, right? And this is the father's will, which have sent me, that of all which ye have given me, I should lose nothing. And that's talking about the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel, but should raise it up should raise it up again at the last day. And that's exactly what he's going to do when he comes back this time. He's going to raise up his elect, right? And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone 
which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, beginning with the elect, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Now, mind you, if it was known that his father was an angel or his father was the Holy Spirit or his father was the special entity, you know, <laughs> anything but Joseph, right? They would have accepted him. One of the reasons they didn't accept him is because he had a biological father and a biological mother. So they were saying, there's nothing special about this guy. Because let's read the next verse. And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai? Right? That was his name, right? The son of Joseph. There you go. The son of Joseph. So the townspeople knew who his father was, his biological father. So this is proof number two. I would love to see these people that say that Yahweh Shai didn't have a biological father. I'd love to see them explain this scripture. And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Come on, man. Come on, man. Whose father and mother we know. How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Exactly. He was, he was talking spiritually. He came down from heaven. He was the one that the Old Testament prophesied should come and give us understanding and be the salvation of the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. He was the spirit chosen. But he had a humble beginning just like everybody else. He had a biological father and mother. Okay? That's the understanding of that. But even the townspeople knew. Even they knew. They said, look, we know your family, man. Okay? And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, if I came down from heaven? There you go. So that was proof number two. His own townspeople knew he had a biological father, which was Joseph. Okay? So to recap this video, let's, let's do a recapping. Right? The first, the first example was Luke. Alright, Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter around the 49th verse is the point when Mary, after being scared out of her wits and terrified and no doubt angry, that she had no idea where her son was, the son at 12 years old. Finally, after finding him, her, uh, her son says to her, or she says to her son, rather, uh, son, why has thou, this is Luke 2 and 48, son, why has thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. And so she makes reference to Joseph. So that's proof number one. Why would Mary mention about the, uh, her, the you know, uh, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow? If if Yahweh Shai didn't have a biological father, those not make sense. All right. So that was proof number one, and proof number two is John six. The townspeople that knew the name of his father and his mother. John 6 and 42, and they said, Is not this Yahweh Shai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then, he saith, I came down from heaven? They, they couldn't understand the spiritual words or the spiritual aspect of what Yahweh Shai was saying. But at least they knew he had a biological father, unlike these, these, these people of today. So in conclusion, J.D. Niger, who's the kook now, huh? You're the one that's a kook. If you believe that our Lord didn't have a biological father, then you explain those two scriptures then. 
I would love to see that. Anyway, it's on to the next one.